Thunder. 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 Thundercats! Ho! Oh! oh yeah. Today's video is focusing on the mighty Thundercats. What's up everyone? James here, and I'm excited, eager, enthusiastic, whatever adjective you want to use, because the Thundercats have returned to our lives in this comic book series from Dynamite Entertainment. This is written by Declan Shalvey, and the artwork is done by Drew Moss. I'm going to be covering half of the first arc in this video. Make sure you hit that like button, and let's not waste any more time and roar into this story. Ho! So, this begins almost exactly like the original cartoon's pilot episode, Exodus. From Lionel's inner monologue, we learn that the home of the Thundercats, Thundera, was destroyed, and the great Thundarian Exodus began. However, the surviving Thundarians survived only to be massacred by the mutants of Plundar, who sought to steal Thundera's greatest treasure, the Eye of Thundera, that's held within the Sword of Omens. His vessel was the only one that escaped the extermination. Jaga, the surviving Thundarian's leader, had piloted their ship to a new world while Lionel and the other Thundercats were put into stasis. However, he ended up dying of old age but not before ensuring they reached this new world called Third Earth. Lino says, Jaga is not here to guide us, to guide me. I am Lino, and by birthright, the new Lord of the Thundercats, and it is my duty to lead the Thundarians in this new world. So for those of you not familiar with the Thundercats, the Thundercats were founded and led by Jaga. They're the elite warriors of Thundera who uphold the Code of Thundera, which is truth, to speak the truth at all times, loyalty, to be loyal to family and friends, honor, to honor and respect superiors, justice, to strive to help others, and fairness in all acts that are committed that is good. This code was created by Jaga. So really think of the Thundercats as these knights who live by a certain philosophy. Now the former leader of all Thundarians, the ruler of Thundera, and the original keeper of the Sword of Omens, before Lionel, before Jaga, was Lionel's father, Lord Claudus. Jaga was his closest friend and top advisor. Both Jaga and Claudus were regarded as the greatest warriors of Thundera. We don't learn the fate of Lord Claudus in this first arc, so that's a mystery. All we know is Jaga, like in the original show, is Lionel's mentor and became leader of the Thundarians and keeper of the Sword of Omens after Claudus. But now, with Jaga's death, both roles fall to Lionel. Now the problem Lionel is facing as the new Lord of the Thundercats is just like the pilot episode, he was a child when they left Thundera, but his stasis pod malfunctioned during their journey to Third Earth, so he wasn't protected from the passage of time. He woke up a fully grown man, and now has to learn what it means to be a man, a warrior, a wielder of the Sword of Omens, a leader of the Thundercats, and a ruler of Thundarians all at once. Despite that, I wouldn't say that's Lionel's biggest problem. You'll see what I'm referring to soon. Panthro has Lionel training with the Sword of Romans against these floating discs. I like that this scene emulates Luke's first training with a lightsaber against the remote drone in New Hope. Panthro is actually my favorite Thundercat because not only was he a highly skilled warrior on the show using his awesome nunchucks, but he was also the Thundercat's chief mechanic and engineer. He's pretty much the same in this series, except he's also the general of the Thundercats. Lionel tells Panthro that this type of training is beneath him because he is a grown man now and should have a harder challenge. He takes this training as Panthro thinking he is not ready. However, Panthro makes it clear to Lionel that just because you're a man now doesn't mean you're ready to be the wielder of the Sword of Omens and the responsibilities that come with it. At that moment, Lionel begins to gloat when he takes out one of the floating discs, but Panthro makes him pay for that by hitting him with his nunchucks and reminding him there are still two more. After the training, Lionel asks Panthro why is he being so harsh with him when he is his trusted mentor. Panthro responds, yes, on Thundera, that was true. But now, on Third Earth, I am your general. Everything is different now. This discussion between Lionel and Panthro will continue, and it's going to get heated. But for now, we go to the rest of the Thundercats. We see Tigra hunting this creature. I love that Declan and Drew, for the most part, kept the designs of the Thundercats the same as the animated series, except for Tigra. In the show, he was younger looking, but still came across as around the same age as Panthro, whereas in this series, they've made him look older and more distinguished. Another thing that makes this Tigra different from his show counterpart is in the show, he was the Thundercats architect and scientist, but in this series, at least in the first half of this arc, he comes across as just a scientist, 
what he does have in common with his show counterpart is his weapon of choice is also a bolo whip and he has the awesome ability to turn invisible we see him use it as he hunts this creature who interrupts his hunt of this creature is the thundercat speedster chitara let me tell you guys something about my girl chitara she is currently the deadliest warrior of the thundercats not only because her speed but also because of how skilled of a warrior she is like the other thundercats have their particular specialties Hers is just kicking butt and taking names. Now the last of the Thundercats we're introduced to is Lion-O's childhood friends, Wily Cat and his sister Wily Kit, also known as the Thunder Kittens. They were close to Lion-O's age before escaping Thundera, but since their stasis pods actually worked, they maintained their age. They are nobles like the rest of the Thundercats. In the show, they were kids that could definitely give the Thundercats enemies, the mutants, some problems. Returning to Lion-O and Panther's discussion, this is where it gets a bit more heated, because Lionel says to Panthro he needs to use the sword more to master it. Panther responds that they've only been on Third Earth for three weeks. He wasn't meant to rule and lead for years. The years of training and experience he would have gained had he grown up normally are now lost, and that's why he is concerned he isn't ready, which is a very legitimate concern. This is Lionel's biggest problem in my opinion, and will be a reoccurring one in this arc. He believes that since he is a man now, and the rightful leader of the Thundercats, he should automatically be treated as both. And Panther is trying to explain that's not how it works. You can't have someone in charge who isn't prepared to be in charge, especially when the survival of their race is on the line. To be fair though, we've all kind of been in Lionel's place, where we can't wait to be an adult, and once we're there, we see that being an adult comes with many responsibilities, some that we're not prepared for. Lionel ends up storming off. When he's by himself in the desert, he expresses his frustration over Panthro treating him like a child and feeling underestimated by him. He thinks that since Jaga entrusted the sword to him, he can face whatever challenges present themselves. And one of those challenges appears because suddenly Lionel sees a mutant ship in the sky. The mutants of Plundar have found them. This is where we finally get the Thundercats going into battle and the moment I'm sure you've all been waiting for. Lino says, Thunder, 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 Thundercats, Ho! The Thundercats symbol illuminates the sky. Now as that's going on, elsewhere on Third Earth, in the desert of the sinking sands, something awakens. The evil of Third Earth, Mumra, feels the power of the Sword of Omens. He says, I feel it. It wakes me. The power. Returning to the Thundercats, Lionel comes face to face with the leader of the mutants, Lord Slythe. When Lionel announces who he is, Slythe is initially confused and doesn't believe that he's Lionel because he was a kid the last time he saw him. Once he inspects Lionel, he believes it. He says, greetings Lionel, I am Slythe. I'm here to kill you and all that you love with my bare hands. Now when I first read this, I thought Lionel was coming across as kind of cheesy. He responds to Slythe while they're fighting, saying, It will never happen, Ord, not while Lionel stands. Prepare to pay for your crimes upon Thundera. I realize though, that even though it's coming across kind of cheesy, this is a boy trying to act like and be what he thinks is a warrior, a hero, and a leader. Despite that though, Lionel is holding his own against Slythe a skilled warrior in his own right. Just when Lionel is about to be surrounded by the remaining mutant forces, the Thundercats arrive. Panthro roars onto the battlefield, saying, FOR THUNDERA! Even though they're heavenly outnumbered, the Thundercats are wiping the floor with the mutants. Quality over quantity, baby. This is child's play to them, like it's not even a fight. Not even the Thunder Kittens are breaking a sweat. Panthero sends his orders to the other Thundercats on the battlefield. He looks closely at Lionel's fight with Slythe and is impressed by how well he's fighting. But when he sees Slythe's axe, he says that he has seen it before. The Thundercats have some type of firepower on them because they damage the mutant ship. Slythe orders a retreat, but that's not happening. His ship crashes onto the battlefield. He becomes enraged and goes to land a fatal blow on Lionel. But Lionel raises his sword to defend himself from Slive's strike. It does protect him. However, the Sword of Omens 
blade is shattered in the process, shocking every one of the Thundercats. Meanwhile, Mumra feels the power of the Eye of Thundera fade. He says, The Eye of Thundera, I felt it. Its power is unmistakable, but it's taken away from me again. Tell me, what have you done with it, Jaga? This is crazy, and let me tell you why. In the original show, similar to Obi-Wan still guiding Luke after his death as a Force ghost, Jaga guided Lionoso after his death in spirit form. However, Declan Shalvi is changing that. So the question is, why is Jaga with Mumra and not Lionel? We'll have to wait and see. But this perfectly leads to what happens next. We go to the very next day. Lionel in the middle of this desert. In the distance, he sees Jaga. He approaches him, wishing for his guidance because the others still see him as a boy and not the man he is now on this world. When he reaches Jaga, he finds nothing but a skull. This all turns out to be just a nightmare. He wakes up, shocking the Thunder Kittens. This is where the Thunder Kittens realize the relationship with Lionel has changed since he became a man. They ask Lionel how he is doing and mention that they haven't talked since they arrived on Third Earth. He doesn't open up to them as he did as a kid. He answers that he's fine. Even when they try to console him about what happened to the sword, they remind him that the most important thing is that they have defeated the mutants for now. Lionel responds with frustration over his failure to protect the sword and asks for privacy. Lionel inspects the Sword of Omens and feels guilt over its current condition because Jaga entrusted it to him. However, though the blade is damaged, he realizes that the Eye of Thundera remains and he uses its power. Another moment I know y'all were waiting for. He says, Sword of Omens, give me sight beyond sight. He asks the sword to show him his fellow Thundercats. He sees them at the mutant's crash ship, salvaging and stripping it of what they can, until suddenly Chitara hears something. Using her super speed, she goes throughout the ship looking. She and the other Thundercats end up discovering an unconscious female Thundarian imprisoned on the ship. Now from here we're going to check on the mutants. Slife has his remaining forces search for a new camp while he plans the next attack on the Thundercats. Unfortunately for these mutants, they've reached the desert of the Sinking Sands. And we're going to learn why it's called that. Because when the mutants reach Mumra's temple, one by one they're all sucked into the sand while begging for their lives. Meanwhile, Slife, alone in these woods, admits to himself that he needed the privacy to devise a plan, but also to tend to his wounds. This is where we learn that the mutants live by a cryptocracy, aka the strongest rules. Slythe explains in his inner monologue that his people are brave warriors who are ruthless in battle, but also ruthless when they see weakness. If any of his soldiers saw that he was weak, none of them would have hesitated to assassinate him and take his title. Out of nowhere, this cycloptic octopus-like creature with the face of a bird wraps its tentacles around him, attempting to eat him. And I have to admit, Slythe is pretty badass. He whips out his mighty axe, slicing the beast's tentacles. Once free from its grasp, he comes plummeting down towards the beast, impaling its eye with his axe. He stands victorious, yelling, I am Slythe. I claim victory over this pathetic world all shall bow before me. Afterwards, Slythe is happy because he needed a victory. However, someone surprises him from behind and takes him. Now I was going to skip this next part initially, but it's kind of important. We go to a discussion between the Thunder Kittens. The realization has hit them that their relationship with Lionel has forever changed. Wily Cat mentions that he treats them as kids now. Now what Wily Kid says is a thought I didn't consider. She responds to her brother saying he treats us like kids because he isn't one all of a sudden. Maybe he's embarrassed by us, or maybe he's jealous. This goes into my earlier point of Lionel wanting to be all these things he needs to be so quickly and forgetting that he was just a child before they got here. So maybe because of the dire situation they're in, he probably believes he's been thrust into this position and must be immediately ready. Wily Kid mentions that he's going through a lot and that they need to be there for him when he's ready. 
At that moment, Chitara arrives at the ship with the unconscious Thundarian they found on the mutant ship. Sometime later, after she awakens, the Thundercats ask her who she is and what happened to her. She explains that her name is Kalika, and one day while she was working on her father's farm, a mutant ship appeared, and they captured her before she could leave. While she was there captive, they first questioned her for days, and after the questioning, they ran test after test on her, each one hurting more than the last. Panthro asked her where her father's farm is, when did this happen, and how long was she on the ship? These are all legitimate questions because this story sounds kind of far-fetched to him. Before she can answer though, Lionel interrupts, and this is where his beef with Panthro gets worse. He tells Panthro that this line of questioning towards a fellow Thundarian who's been through a lot is unnecessary. Panthro argues they don't know her, and this could be a mutant trick, that it is his duty to make sure they're safe and secure. Instead of being understanding, Lionel just takes this as Panthro accusing him of not caring about their safety and security. He responds that their future depends more on helping fellow Thundarians and having them join them in order for them to become stronger. When Panthro says, do not be naive, son, Lionel gets pissed and replies, I am not your son. I am your lord and you will obey. Tigra interrupts de-escalating the situation and tells Lino to escort Calica to the guest quarters. After they leave, Tigra assures Panthro that he completely agrees with him. Calica's story came across as too perfect, but challenging Lino in front of them isn't a good idea because he will just become more stubborn, that it's obvious Calica is affecting him in some way. Now, only Chitara is astute enough to figure out what that effect is. Later, she tells Tigra that Lionel has fallen in love with this girl, which makes sense when you think about it. Lionel skipped puberty, being a teenager, and is now a man all of a sudden. So he's fallen for the first attractive girl he meets, and we've all been there. Now, Lionel takes Calica to his quarters to catch her up on everything that's transpired since her capture. He shows her the broken Sword of Omens, and explains that he failed to protect it during the mutant attack. He then tells her how Thundera is destroyed, and the surviving Thundarians were massacred by the mutants, that their group is the very last of the Thundarians. When she realizes her family is gone, she begins to mourn. When she asks what will I do now, Lionel consoles her and answers, you will stay with us, we are your family now. Unbeknownst to Lionel, and really to no surprise, Kalika is Mumra's servant. If you want the second half of the first arc, where the story gets even crazier, comment below. That's the end of the video. Make sure you subscribe. Help me reach 50,000 subscribers and follow the Go Beyond Comics podcast. Other than that, have an awesome day and always remember every day to go beyond.